Okay, so today we've got another little project. We've got an old S10. I think it's an 89, I believe. And it has a little four cylinder in it. And the water pump, well, the bearing on the water pump has decided that it is no longer happy. So we're gonna start turning that down. I'll get the camera set up, then we're gonna get the fan shroud off. We will probably have to jack it up, start the coolant draining, and then start pulling the pump. So I don't know if you can see it, but there is a little pet cock right down on the driver's bottom corner of the radiator. Just loosen this up. And as long as it's not completely full of junk, it'll start trickling out. Okay, I'm just going to work on getting this fan shroud off. my videos I normally talk about a lot of things that you really shouldn't do but you can do and they also normally involve hammers like whacking hydraulic cylinders and stuff when you put an engine together so we're gonna do some slight tapping to try to get this this fan popped off we've got the cardboard in there now because we'll have to get this off and try to get that pulley off otherwise you can't get to the water pump nuts You ought to, let's see, if I was put, turn this thing on for a little bit, you want me to turn it on? It is turned on. It, yeah, it's recording. Oh, it's recording. Oh. <laughs> see, I just pried around on here. Well, these, uh, these old engines, uh, the old four back, uh, four, 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 four. And that's and, why you put cardboard in there. Yeah. They're al almost indestructible. I, when I bought this truck for $500, it had set for four years without ever being started. And uh, I don't even check the oil in the thing between oil changes. That just doesn't use any oil. And, and uh, it's got a five speed in it. And uh, that's the best shifting transmission you could ever find. In fact, a friend of mine had one of uh, It was a dually van or I think it was more like a suburban he called his tool around it and I, I looked at him and I said boy that is the easiest shift of transmission there ever was he said oh yeah yeah Chevrolet like uses different transmission than his newer truck but of course this truck is I guess 30 years old now but anyway uh, he said uh, yeah that, that transmission is out of an S10 I said what do you mean it's an S10 that transmission hold up to the next? Oh, yeah, I use them all the time. I use them. Cars that I, you know, I don't know. He builds cars. Well, he puts he them in those them. drag cars and stuff. Yeah. You? I don't know if he does that. I don't know if they'd hold that. But as long as you drive it, they'll build it. And it's just an easy transmission. You don't even, with that fifth gear, you can shift through that thing and you don't even know you're shifting. In fact, with this thing, sometimes you're in third gear and you're shifting your fifth and still in third gear. Really, it's really a good transmission. I wouldn't have it automatic. I don't really automatic transmission. Because <laughs> uh, you can't pull them to start them. And... But my brothers had them in the S10s and they seem like they stay, stay in there too. But... I should have, I should have a long time ago, should have 
lot of kiss cat. This is really, especially these older missiles, I would call this a square cat. Before, before the, the change, got, the gutters are purple. The newer ones are junk. Like yeah. these ones are good, but the the rounder looking ones. Yeah. Are, yeah. The doors are too, and that's true of any of these trucks. We put too big a do heavy doors on, and that, and that leverage over time. If you keep a truck for 50 years, they just going to cause you trouble. We'll just get the radiator hose off there and then start breaking bolts loose on the water pump. It's always kind of a good idea to scrape around and make sure nothing will go in the engine. But So we'll just get the water pump bolts off. This is where you normally make a mess because the block won't drain all the way out and then cool and goes all over the ground. But that's the price you pay for having fun. Shoot, this is the first time I've fixed anything on an engine on any of these. They don't I've never touched one. Yeah. Or I put a I put a distributor rotor on one one time, but it had like 200,000 miles on it. This truck here, when I got it, they were using it for a carrier truck. They picked up, I think, cars and banks when banks used to make take the... They picked the cars up after the bank was um, closed in St. Louis, and then they bring the cars back for the next day. I think that's what they used it as a repo, like repo cars, isn't it? No, they were bank cars. Before they had this direct, this, uh, what do they call it, you know, uh, electronic uh, transfer of checks. Yeah. They actually had, uh, they actually had cards, computer cards they took to the Federal Reserve in, in St. Louis. I think that's what this truck was used for. It had, well, I got it, it showed, it had a quarter of a million miles on it, and it's really not rusted out. It, uh, I guess they took good care of it because it would have been in all kinds of moves. Uh, you know, uh, Icy roads and everything else. Yeah, would have seen about everything if that's what it was doing. But what S10 I have, it's really, I, I really like it. It's a relative. It got hit the side by a little kid got in it. Oh, this kid got in another car and came across the street and ran to the side of it. And, and it. This has power string on it. It's got a V6 engine in it, which is really, it's really a nice truck. Uh, the black one? That black, black one with a, green, with a blue or green door on it, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And that, it's, uh, I mean, it, it's really, if they built trucks like that, they'd sell them, but I guess they won't pass the fuel standards, even though they probably don't burn them. Well, the problem would be they would never get a fix on. You know, they'd go on like uh, General Electric. They went broke when they made refrigerators because they they didn't break. You know, bought a new refrigerator. But back in the old days, in the '60s or well, I guess late '50s, when the started getting popular in trucks, the only people that had them were were loggers. I saw this one up at. Chevrolet dealership one day and looked like somebody had just taken a sledgehammer and just beat the living daylights out of them with a new truck. But uh, but uh, then then farmers started you know getting them and uh, but uh, I think it was kind of yeah. So we're just gonna get the we got all the bolts out of the water pump. There's just four, so we're just gonna get that knocked off. Now that. The, the Cummings, that water pump, that engine they use, that water pump is kind of in the, I mean, it's in the side, the side of the engine. They just pull off the, you don't have to take the fan. Well, I don't know if any of them have a fan in front anymore, but you don't have to take the fan off to, to do the water pump. On a tractor, it's just a simple job to change the water water mechanic. On the side? Yeah, it's right, it's, it's right here. Uh -oh. 
water pump is. It, dri it still drives off this, what do you call it? The, this bell. The, the serpentine the, bell? Serpentine bell, but you don't have to take anything else. Because this guy came out and put one on that, uh, that 70, 7120, and I said, would you, you have that done already? Oh, yeah. You just, it's just a simple deal. Of course, in the mechanic, everything is simple. I do something that's a lot of mess things up. But anyway, well, he's probably uh, also done 15 of them this yeah, year. Yeah. And uh, the only time I saw him actually make a mistake was he put one on one time. And he, I forget what it was. It was something inside he didn't take out, which shouldn't have been in there. And it would didn't figure out what was going on. He, took it apart then he realized what he had done but that's about the only mistake he's ever made so i've got that gasket cleaned up now so if there's any brake clean line which there isn't just so, get that clean because i'm going to put some permatex on the gasket so it seals better and uh, so when i put this in i'm going to Put a little bit of Permatex on both sides of the gasket, just to help it stick on there. And then two of the bolts, I know because I saw them leak, I'm gonna clean them up and then I'm gonna put some sealant on there because they're through holes into the water passages. There's this one guy I watch on YouTube, uh, Western Truck and Tractor Repair, out in the, he's out in like the strawberry fields and stuff in California. And about the only thing he ever has to kill those tractors for is the, input shaft to the transmission, the splines get worn out and you can't find them because there's no scrap tractors of those laying around because yeah. they're yeah. all still around. Yeah. <laughs> so if that, and he said that's about the only thing you ever have to put them down for. Well, I had a friend that basically had put a, a large industrial loader on one of those magnums, but Industrial loaders have side rails on them that, that brace the, uh, that, so they don't put so much kind of tie strain on the, together. on the houses. And he was doing some back dra dragging and actually broke the casting between the transmission and the, the engine. engine. Huh. But they did find one someplace, I don't know what it was. And, uh, Got it fixed, but they wouldn't. Uh, I'm just noticing too a lot of these smaller tractors now that they come out uh, like a farm tractor with the loader on it. There, some of them are putting bra bracing underneath there. I'm, I'm sure that's what that reason so they don't break those tractors. In there. Figure if you're a real professional, you torque these, but if you see here, I have a normal ratchet, and you go and you say click and then that's the torque spec anybody can tighten a bolt but what'd you say about a real mechanic can he could take one of that without breaking it all that's been in there for a while so, he knows how to get a bolt out without breaking it off and once you break it off it's a mess so i guess at tech school their final project should be taking an old bolt out and if they break it they can't never on an old engine that's been running for 20 years. Yeah, give them a little farm all and yeah. tell them to take all the exhaust studs yeah, out yeah. without breaking them. They can pass their test and go home. So yeah, we'll just get these tightened down. Uh, put the hose back on and get the fan back on. It's pretty well done. 40 years ago or so, when we used to run them old 300 international, internationals, you took it to a, shop, to a shop. When you got out of the shop, the first thing you did is you grabbed a hold of that string wheel and you yanked on as hard as you could backwards to make sure they put that landing collar on it. Not that the string wheel came off. <laughs> well, doesn't it come off on the one you still have? Probably does. Because I remember when I drove it to that plow day, I was about to turn onto the blacktop and the steering wheel came off my hands. <laughs> That's about like the W, but they dug me a call on Wolf, Wolf, Wolf Creek Pass. I just laid that call last night. I was about to get this, uh, what, this uh, $35 aluminum shifting knob that just came off in his hand, and he was trying to get a screw back off. 
shifter when they was they found out it didn't have brakes on the truck and they Ash, then a sick daughter to, fell down in his pants and lit his socks yeah, on fire. Yeah, fire and all this was happening. And then they came to this, this uh, underneath this, not culvert, but uh, I guess a bridge. And it was marked 12-9 uh, as his chickens were, were sacked. 13-5. Uh, 13-9 as it had a, one row of clucking chickens went off the <laughs> top of the load. So that's a... Uh, I don't know how they came up with that song because I know where Wiggins, Colorado is, and it's Wolf Creek Pass at Pedosa Springs. It's quite a ways away. I don't know. I've never really tracked it how how he how how they went that way, but uh, well, we ought to go on a road trip. And yeah. Drive Wolf Creek Wolf yeah. Creek Pass and cut the brake lines yeah. first. <laughs> When we went out there, there was one of those company drivers in one of the Volvo trucks or whatever. And I don't think he understood keep it in a low gear going downhill because yeah, yeah. he was passing everybody and his brakes were smoking. Good. So I don't know how that ended. But. Well, on some of these, I think on some of these, maybe on some of these newer trucks, they can take more. But I think in the old days, they you didn't want to. Well, I just, uh, oh, there's a song about... Mount Eagle Mountain. It's between Chattanooga and uh, let's see, Chattanooga and uh, shoot, Nashville. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, it's about a lot of truckers lost their life on it. And, it, and I was watching a film there of one guy going down, and this was a modern trucker, and he wouldn't go down at faster than 30, 35 miles an hour. Yeah. And. Uh, of course, if a sign would get within a half a mile with the bottom at that time, then you you probably uh, accelerate as much as you can because then you got to get up, you know. Uh, oh, then you got to climb back up. Yeah. Well, let's see though. That means Maybe, you, I don't. What? You, you have to climb it. You have to. I guess you got to climb it. You got to climb it. Uh, you know, going up. You. Tighten the fan bolts back down, kind of do it evenly because there's a slight press fit, so you don't want to warp anything. And uh, make sure they're tight, or else your fan will go through your radiator. Yeah, I don't know how the truckers did it, you know, back, back mm -hmm. then. Well, once once one of them won't stop, there's no end. I mean, then there's, or you don't, can't. Well, the guy that we went and looked at that cab over, didn't he say if you're going 20 over in a semi, it's considered a lethal weapon or something? That could be, yeah. Oh, over the speed, yeah, over yeah, the speed limit. Yeah, speeding 20 yeah. over. Or a deadly weapon. Mm -hmm. Well, that accident they had over at Madison a week or so ago, that, that guy, if he had a heart attack or what, hit that train probably going 60 miles an hour, the third car on the train, and basically knocked that. But anyway, the train, that engine broke loose from the front two engine that landed out in the field about at least 100 feet from the railroad track. Yeah. And then the, it's all in a rock, and the, one of the cars behind it then turned over and started piling up the track and the rails and ties and shoving rock and everything else. Well, how much does one of those weigh with everything on it? Well, I think I think if you, I think a hundred thousand pounds on it because like a semi, all they're from things on the truck. Probably from I'd be impressed with a hundred thousand. Yeah, that'd be. That'd be. Fan. 
I'm going to go ahead and put the belt on while everything is sort of apart so it'll just make it easier. Then we'll put the shroud back on, put coolant in it, and it will be ready to go. You can take it off with your hands. I wouldn't try to put it back on. That's how you hurt yourself trying to put it back on. If you get angry, you can do it because I've done that, but I wouldn't recommend it. I told how that works. That's kind of interesting. No, that's all the new cars are. Yeah. So you just on your serpentine belt, you've got the tensioner. It's got a square half inch drive that you you can buy a tool for it or you can just use a ratchet. Then you pull it, hook your belt on. I like the old V belts better than these, but that's just me being picky, I guess. But so yeah, we'll just put coolant back in it, and I'll get that shroud on. I probably won't film that because it's straightforward. And then we'll. Okay, so we got it filled back up. We got the shroud put back on. Now start up and see if something blows up or leaks. <laughs> 